Just make it fill the screen. Is it better? Now it's in presenter mode. So you can see two pages. Uh, okay. Just make this fill out the screen, that's all. Just pull it, make, maximize it. Is it bigger now? I think this is good. Okay. You maximize the width, now maximize the height as well. Yeah, but I have a very large screen, unfortunately. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, it is better if you pull it up. Okay. So here is our agenda, uh, not too packed, but uh, we may have a more long discussion for the latest draft uh, based on the exchange we had on the list for so for the um, IGMP MLD uh, uh, proxy draft. So we kept this draft at the end uh, to um, uh, keep the maximum amount of time uh, for uh, for the discussion. Working group status, um, no new RFC published since the last uh, IETF. We still have two documents in the RFC editor queue, mainly due to uh, uh, some um, dependent documents uh, that are, uh, uh, I think DCI EVPN overlay is still waiting for the tunnel on caps uh, to be closed. An EVPN prefix advertisement is a, uh, uh, waiting for the intercept net forwarding uh, to also be uh, to also be closed. Uh, so the, for this intercept net forwarding document, um, we are still pending some updates from uh, from the offers on this one. Uh, we still have a couple of documents under ISG review and. For especially for the NSH BGP control plane document, I think uh, Adrian, you still have to provide some replies um, on, on the comments coming from the ISG. Adrian? Adrian, can, can you provide some update? I literally joined as uh, asking me um, and using my name. What are you asking about? Oh, on the NSH BGP control plane, there was a couple of comments coming from the ISG, and we have seen any reply, in fact. Uh, okay, I'll look. I thought I handled it, but I'll, I'll check. Okay, thank you. Uh, I see a name already in working group uh, status. In queue, is there uh, someone wants to make some comment? Uh, I see Italo Busi has written a name in working group status that there is some question. You can go ahead. Okay, let's, yeah, let's continue. Okay, we then have a couple of documents uh, in Shepherd Review, uh, especially uh, the unequal cost load balancing. So I have um, provided my review. Um, the main issue with this draft is that it relies on some of the uh, uh, link bandwidth uh, community, and this draft uh, is still expired for the moment. 
so I reached out via the offers and um, uh, they will try to, uh, to see um, how to, uh, to revive the um, uh, link bandwidth document and update it uh, to, uh, uh, to accommodate the changes required by uh, the unequal cloud balancing draft. Uh, the <coughs> virtual internet segment uh, still requires a new region. Uh, MSD, MSDP SA interoperation. Um, I think Monkamana, it's uh, you are done with the review on this one. Yeah, I have completed the review. I just need to submit the write up, and most probably I'll do it today or tomorrow. Okay. Uh, just on the EVPN pref DF, uh, I also provided my uh, my review, but I haven't seen any re reply yet from uh, from the offers. Okay, we still have a couple of documents in uh, the working group last call queue. Um, the good thing is that we are. Uh, uh, the queue has uh, reduced uh, from uh, uh, from the last uh, from the last status, uh, so it's a uh, it's a good thing. But we still have a couple of documents to uh, to proceed uh, to proceed with, and we will start uh, right after this uh, this ITF meeting. Uh, some updates we got uh, on the working group document. Uh, so the multicast flow DF election, uh, we need to close the IGP proxy draft first. Uh, fast DF recovery, uh, we need an update from, uh, uh, from the offers on this one. And data center gateway, uh, I think Adrian, this one is also on your side. Could you try to give me an update on uh, the data center gateway? Uh, yes, I. So this this one had been bouncing backwards and forwards between me and you, um, trying to um, resolve a, a, a final question, and mm. uh, um, probably the best uh, approach to this is that if we can uh, carve out. 10 minutes between us to actually talk and um, and get conclusion on that last point. Okay. Okay, let's do that. I'll, I'll pin you. Okay. 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 Um, EVP and VPWS FXC, nothing special to mention. Regarding the Yang models, uh, discussing with um, uh, the, uh, the editors, the main uh, issue with the documents is that uh, we, it seems that there is no implementation yet uh, on this, of this Yang model, and even there is no, uh, at least we are not aware of any prototype. Uh, so the question is, do we want to move forward uh, the document publish them as, uh, as RFCs without having um, implementation? Uh, probably it may be too risky. There are a lot of interdependencies uh, between the models. Um, at least in my opinion, I think it may be better to wait at least to get some feedback from people prototyping uh, uh, and so on. Uh, this may help um, to ensure that uh, uh, what we are provi currently providing in, uh, in this draft is, uh, uh, is correct and can really, be, um, can really be implemented. So yeah, if people uh, uh, agree on that, we would like to, uh, to hold on on this draft uh, until there are some uh, uh, implementation of prototypes. So, uh, if people are aware of any prototype, say, feel free to share. So, this is Manchu here. Um, there is, at least from our side, at least here from the CNS side, we do have, we don't have a complete implementation, but we do have some versions of the implementations for L2VPN. <sighs> as well as for EVPN. I, I think you what you are right is that there is a lot of interdependencies between the L2VPN and EVPN. 
uh, and uh, network instance and all other stuff we we do need to uh, sort those uh, relationship out uh, and and but we i think what does need to happen that we need to you know we need to put the document out people are maybe not comfortable implementing something that is in the, in the draft status so i think we we need to make a progress and and um, bring it to the rfc status so we can so that more vendors would uh, would do, do the implementation that, that's my take on that uh, i think that's okay, on the, okay but you, you see also the um, the other side that if we publish uh, as RFC and we discover that um, the model is broken in some way, we will have to publish a new, a new RFC to, uh, to correct it. This has happened already with a uh, with couple of Yang model, but uh, my point is if we can try to avoid this, uh, that will also be better. But I, 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 am, I understand also your point. Maybe what, what we can do is uh, we can take it to, uh, to the list to see um, how, how we can proceed. Are you, are you suggest, uh, well, it is not in the broken status as, as of now. I mean, it is that there are some loose ends that we need to tie it up. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and I think one of the aspect of that is to provide um, an appendix that shows uh, an example on how you would configure an L2 VPN or an eVPN, you know, what would you support as an example? And that would make it a lot more clearer as to how this model can be implemented. And also, it would make it a little more clearer if there are any loose ends, then we said, okay, yeah, we need to tie these things up. So that exercise we do need to go through. Um, it, it just, yeah, it just uh, taking me longer to get to it. Um, so, uh, yeah, that, well, Patrice is online. Hey, Patrice, what do you think? He's, uh, he's leading the EVPN aspect of it. Um, yeah, I think we need not to prove that the pudding is working. So I would agree with you uh, that we need to have maybe um, an appendix explaining how that's going to get a uh, program. You... Sorry, I didn't get exactly what you are saying. Should we I put an I, example I, aspects of it, or yeah, do, do we need yeah, to bring example, something? Yeah, example would be important, right? We discussed about that uh, in Manchu a while back, and I think this is something that uh, that we need to uh, just show, and yeah. so people understand how it works, and then people can provide comments if they are happy, and then if they are happy, then we can release. Exactly. Right. Right. I. That's it. That I think, and it will also help us identify any gaps, right? Just uh, uh, can we give a turn to people on the queue, please? Uh, I see Jeff uh, Jeffrey has and Italo Busi in the queue. Sure. Yeah, Italo, you can go ahead, please. We can't hear you. Jeff, you want to go next, please? Uh, I see you You have written name for Yang models. Yes. Uh, so me, everybody can hear me? Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Um, so I, I have done no contributory work towards the L3VPN model I got added to. I was sort of ambushed into helping with the model a little bit. Uh, but the comment I do want to make on the Yang models in general, and part of why I got added to the L3VPN model was that these things are built on top of uh, <clears throat> services that, in many cases, that run on top of BGP. The BGP model itself was not in good shape until you know, roughly the last uh, six, nine months. Uh, I've been working very heavily with the uh, ritual authors on that draft uh, to try to make sure that the contents of the BGP model are clean. And we've spent the last uh, couple of sessions worth of editing, working on some of the structural issues. The last set of uh, issues that I've identified for them that need to be uh, dealt with are what I tend to call inner work uh, issues. Uh, it's perfectly fine to create a model that's standalone, but it doesn't do you a lot of good unless it actually works with the things that it needs to work with. So in the case of you know, these VPN models, 
there is interactions with you know, BGP in terms of some of its operational configuration state. There's interactions with policy, which is a model that's maintained by a routing working group right now. So my recommendation for this working group on these models is it's part of the exercise you're talking about to the appendices of try to use the things, try to figure out what the config state looks like, try to figure out what the operational state looks like. Can you actually get your work done? That's common for a VPN network. And if you can't, that's usually either because there's some structural or content uh, issue in the model itself, or potentially there's a missing component that should be supplied externally. You know, so like Stefan and I have uh, spoken before about uh, where the AFI SAFI stuff is maintained and who owns that piece, that's still to be resolved. But now that the BGP model is sort of stabilized, I think that answer could be happening very soon. But it does mean that uh, for each of these models, I suspect there'll be policy components and you need to go to routing working group to make sure that uh, your issues are dealt with there. And if there's issues with the BGP model, uh, I and the other co-authors will happily take further feedback on that. Can I respond to that? I'm done. So, so I, I think that I, I don't think we should have too much interdependencies between, uh, I mean, yes, the uh, L2VPN and especially the EVPN uses the BGP. Uh, but as far as the policies, I wouldn't go too far into, uh, you know, what, what uh, all the policies that are related to the BGP be brought into or have created dependency within EVPN for the policies, BGP policies, right? As long as we just have the route targets, import exports, and all that, uh, and, and uh, uh, the BGP session related stuff, I think we should try not to have put too much interdependencies. Otherwise, this will never get completed. Uh, there is an LDP and for pseudo wires and all that stuff, right? If I could have the follow up on that, uh, there will be a brief one. Him, please, uh, so that later. Again, Jeffrey has. Uh, I, I agree that minimizing interdependencies is good. I agree that not trying to be completely uh, feature complete for some vendors implementation of policy is probably a right thing. The policy modules that are being written across IETF are mostly trying to provide necessary hooks so that vendor implementations can do their job. Again, my request is that as everybody goes through their various models, so I'm gonna pick on EVPN as a specific example. EVPN does interact with policy for things like DCI and for things like uh, you know the EVPN replacement for effectively L3 VPN. If you cannot do standard operational behaviors in your model, even as a future extension, it means your model is not structured right. So worry about your structuring issues and figuring out what the requirements are everything falls from there. Okay. So I take your, this is Imanshu again. I take your comments. I think we are trying to come up with a base EVPN with, because EVPN has us lots and lots and lots of features. So if we, we cannot keep up with, uh, with uh, all, all those features, accommodate them. But you are right. We need to put structure in place. So if we want to extend later, uh, there are right hooks available. So comment on behalf of Italo because he is not able to, uh, I think we can't hear him. So his comment is that we need to coordinate with uh, OPSA working group regarding L2 VPN, L3 VPN Yang model and L2 NM, L3 NM Yang models. Okay, I would request for Italo to send exact comments on what aspects of uh, uh, we should look for in the other OPSA working group or that would be helpful, right? Yeah, so next I think Susan uh, is in queue for Yang model. Yeah, very briefly because uh, we I'll are- be brief. be brief. If once you answer Jeff's question, I would also like you to describe if you anticipate versioning, how you're going to do the versioning to pick up the policy you cut out the first time. See the net uh, 
uh, mod versioning discussions. Thank you. Okay. Okay, let's finish the working group status. Uh, we have couples of um, new working group documents uh, since the last uh, ITF. Uh, the last one, um, I think Matthew, you, pulled, uh, uh, you did the poll on this one, and there is a consensus to adopt, but the adoption has not uh, really occurred yet, but uh, the adoption should be okay. And we still have three documents um, for which authors have required the, uh, the working group uh, adoption, so we will see and proceed uh, accordingly. Okay, let's start with our agenda. Gaurav, you are the first one. Yeah, hi, Stefan. Hi, folks. This is Gaurav Davra. Um, I'll be covering the SRV6 BGB services. Thanks, Mankanma, for adding me to the first slot. I have a meeting right after this. So let's get to it. Um, next slide. So as we know, um, this document kind of covers the signaling for all the uh, AFs, L3 VPN, V4, V6, global, and eVPN. Next slide, please. So this kind of lists the draft progress. We first presented it IDR in IETF 98, um, and then we introduced the eVPN in IDR in IETF 101. We presented the document in 104, in uh, BESS, uh, the entirety, um, we also took the comments from the working group regarding the update packaging optimization and represented it at 105. And then we adopted the document just before 106. So uh, what is the update in this document? Um, Pretty much the document um, is the same. We have added some clarifications based on the comments which we have received and working closely with various vendors and authors. Um, we have um, added the multiple SID, SID, SID signaling just to provide the flexibility for the same route. Um, we have added a mechanism, of course, which, we, which has been mentioned earlier about the transposition scheme so that uh, to update the more optimized packaging and the details of that has been added. There are some examples which have been added for both eVPN and for L3 VPN. Um, there was some ambiguity around the next stop handling and SID reachability. So there was a clarif clarification text which has been added for L3 services on how we handle the next stop um, for both the next stop unchanged and next stop changed cases. Um, and also the text about the route SID reachability um, clarification. Um, as the error handling, uh, we for this particular TLV, we have also clarified um, about um, how to handle if there is a if there is a formatting issue uh, to treat it as a withdraw, <clears throat> and that has been added in the document as well in the error handling section. There was, uh, based on uh, the implementation and the uh, comments, which we have received and working closely with uh, some of the vendors on, uh, on the EVPN signaling part, we have added the clarifications for the route type three handling and also added the text regarding the um, optimized uh, packaging for EVPN signaling as well. And then, um, this this was kind of missing from the document the local bias method which is um 
following the same um, EVP and base procedures. Um, but we have added the text on how the local bias is also um, handled for SRV6. So that has been included um, in the document. Um, there, have, there are a few editorial changes, and this is just purely to um, make sure there is a there is a improved document flow um, and adding all the required changes based on the feedback and implementation uh, learnings, which we have done um, over the past uh, past uh, few years um, and also working closely with with both um, with multiple vendors. So. We have uh, reordered some section just to improve the document flow, and that is purely just the reordering and there is no any other specific changes. Um, we have also added the TNV encoding, um, which is added before the uh, services signaling section. Of course, we have updated the references for 5549. Um, there are some redundant text which was there for L3 services um, and for uh, some EVPN part, so we have we have removed that from the common sections and moved it to the appropriate uh, base specs. Regarding the IANA uh, early allocation, uh, we requested for the working group early allocations um, March third, just before this me meeting yesterday. AC actually approved it, so thanks AC for. For that, we request for the formalization of these allo allocations code points, please, uh, so that uh, you know this this can be uh, this can be completed. Uh, and these are the suggested code points which were requested. Now, regarding the implementation um, and also the deployment, this document is widely uh, deployed um, and implemented from multiple vendors. There are some implementations which are already in production. So we have uh, or, uh, and, and shipping. Uh, we have Cisco, which in, in multiple Cisco platforms, it's it's implemented in its entirety. We have um, Huawei, uh, which has also implemented it. And there are other vendors which we know of are already working on on the document uh, implementation and working closely with us. Um, there is also open source implementations uh, in Linux kernel and also in FDIO. Uh, there are multiple deployment deployments for segment routing uh, uh, services document in uh, with SoftBank, China Telecom. Um, China, Unicom, and multiple other vendors, as you can see, and there was a multiple vendor interop, which was which was done at uh, EN Tech. Uh, there are more details. This document below has been implemented, uh, updated to mention all the implementation details. So, if somebody is interested, please please feel free to look at that document. There are quite a few many, so I didn't mention everything over here. Um, next steps, um, since there are multiple implementations and deployments and this document has been um, around, we are requesting and preparing for the last call um, request for this document um, around uh, Madrid 108. And again, um, if there are any reviews and comments about the document, please feel free to reach out to us um, and we will be happy to work with you. Thank you. Okay, Mankamana, do we have some people or? I don't see any thank you, so we can go to the next. Okay. Mankama, I will drop off after this, okay? Thanks. Yeah, sure. Okay, bye. Okay, Linda, you're the next speaker. Hello. Okay, I sent you an updated slides. If you have, can you use that one instead? Um, I have to check. I downloaded. I have downloaded. I, I just want just um, um. Anyway, I can use this one. It's okay. So this um, draft uh, has been presented in last two IPFs, I think, and it's mainly to describe how do we use uh, BGP for SD1 case. So this is 
um, this slide is basically showing the, the key items being discussed. So mainly to encourage more people to read it is um, not that complicated. We follow the same format as RFC 8388. Um, that one described how um, EGP used for eBPN. And so here we just have three major parts. One is the use cases and requirement. And the second part is um, the BGP walkthrough to show how different BGP update messages are carried through the network. And uh, um, third part is um, the packet walkthrough. Um, so I'm here to encourage people to read it uh, because we really want to um, call for working group adoption. Next slide, please. Okay, so for, for SD1, some of the key um, characteristics of SD1. Primarily, SD1, we all know, is overlay network, right? So it basically, augment a network. Um, the, the, the underlay network can be many different kinds and can traverse multiple segments of a network belonging to different operators. Um, and there could be multiple parallel paths over different underlays. Um, second one, which is not very related to routing area is about um, um, internet breakout. And today many corporations, like um, they have traffic, like my company here, we route all the traffic to um, Santa Clara office before we can go out to the internet because all the policies are enforced over there. So in many of the SD1 deployments, it is very highly desirable to distribute the policies to individual sites. Uh, so the internet breakout can happen right there to improve the performance. So the second one. The third one is um, um, some of the applications need to be um, forwarded based on the application ID instead of um, destination ID. So those are the three char key characteristics of the SD1 network. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, so um, in SD1, there could be like um, many instances on they call segmentations. Um, so for a particular um, edge node, they may need to support SD1 instance for um, a customer for client one, or maybe need to create uh, support another instance for um, a different client. It's very much like uh, VPN, VIF. And the only difference is, is not VPN is really over the uh, maybe untrusted network or over IPsec tunnels. So, um, um, so because there are similarity, we advocate for using similar approach as uh, uh, VPNs, right? VPN has the route target to represent different route instances. We can use the similar extended community to represent different SD1 target ID so that um, they can, the receiver can put the advertisement uh, update into appropriate um, um, routing table. And also that um, um, the SD1 instance ID need to be carried by the payload. So um, here we are advocating that, um, that we can use similar approach um, to carry the VPN uh, as VPN ID being carried by the NLRI path attributes. Um, we can use similar approach like um, um, uh, SAPI 128 and the route distinguisher to dis distinguish routes in case different um, clients may use their own private addresses and may collide with each other. Um, so that's um, how we can achieve um, separating different SD1 instances belonging to different clients. Next page, please. Um, another key um, part is um, SD1 network can be deployed in very large scale in, in a way that geographically in many different locations. And for each location, each of the devices, the edge nodes may be only uh, interested in very, very small number of uh, uh, instances. Like if, you, if I have an SD1 um, device deployed in a small uh, shopping mall, he probably only interested in one or two instances. Um, but the SD1 network itself may consist of um, 
hundreds of instances. So it is very important that um, the propagation of the update has to be constrained. So um, BGP has a really good um, um, a property to constrain the route propagation. Um, this is RFC 4684 to constrain the, uh, the BGP update. So if you are CP1, for example, you only have uh, maybe one I see one instance interested. You can just tell your uh, corresponding route reflector, hey, I'm only interested in the green instance. And then CP2 is only interested in green instance. And versus CP10 is interested in blue. It could be one CP interest in both um, instances. Then the update will be sent. Both update will be sent to them. So by constraining them, we can reduce great number of control messages floating in the network. Um, of course, for smaller scale deployment, it is also possible to manually set up the the policy on where you want to distribute. So that's just menu uh, static method. Next slide, please. Um, here I'm just walking through how we use BGP to propagate the properties of the SD1 edge. And in this example, what is the epithelmer? Who is not speaking? Can you please mute? Uh, I think Gyan, can you please mute? Okay. So, so this um, scenario basically um, for attach routes, multiple routes, uh, we can use one IPsec tunnel, regardless of which network it comes from. Um, so, with this, is very simple. You just, uh, as a traditional Manila SAPI one. IP and to say, hey, the, here are the prefixes and here are the some of the tunnel attributes. Of course, you have to be able to indicate what kind of IP set properties you support as like CP2. When he announced the property, he has to say what kind of algorithm he support, what kind of encryption he support, and what kind of public key he support sent to the route reflector. And the route reflector, were based on um, the interested group propagated to CP3 and CP2, uh, CP1. So that's a very simple uh, case of using BGP to advocate, uh, propagate the, the, the SD1 um, uh, attached routes. Next, please. So in this case, it's about uh, supporting different topologies. And um, the one topology, one uh, case of SD1 is like, see here we have um, a red um, route, right? The VLAN 25 and uh, prefix 22.1.1 slash 24. So this route is only to be distributed to CP3, not to CP2. Um, in other routes, the blue route is only to CP1. To achieve this purpose, um, you can, the CP2, the origin of the uh, announcement, basically um, put two separate BGP messages to the, uh, to the route reflector. One is to um, indicate the blue tunnel, and this blue tunnel is only to be uh, propagated to CP1. Another one is the red tunnel. That one is only to be distributed to CP3. So by doing this, you practically create a different topology for the SD1 because SD1 can be over very different geographic locations. Controlling the topology can be, is currently actually a big challenge. BGP is great in, in creating that, make it possible. Um, next slide, please. So um, this one is. Um, um, Actually, th this is where I made a mistake here. Um, this is fine grant um, um, tunnels, meaning for every prefix, um, they, they need to have separate tunnels. Then we need two, uh, three separate messages for three of the prefixes. So basically, in the first update, we'll only have the first uh, um, 
a client route, 10.1. And then second message uh, will have the VLAN 15. The third message is a prefix 12.1. So I'm sorry, this one, I made a mistake. I sent an update the slide. Hopefully you will upload that one. So this just showing that if you, um, for this particular deployment, you want different tunnels for different prefixes, and then you can use BGP, this kind of BGP to, to achieve that. Next one. Okay, so, so the, for the application-based segmentation in SD1, um, BGP is great to achieve that. So the use case is really like in many of the uh, um, retail um, space using SD1. Uh, their payroll, the payment uh, traffic can only go to the payment gateway uh, versus other traffic are, uh, can be going to any other nodes. So it is very strictly enforced. Um, the payment goes to the payment gateway. By using BGP, we can achieve this kind of topology. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, this just walks through using the BGP. Basically, for the red route, and you send an uh, update to the route reflector and the raw reflector was sent, uh, propagate that into the uh, payment gateway for the red. And then for the others, um, the second update will be distributed to all other nodes. So that's how we use BTP to achieve the uh, application-based segmentation topology. Okay, next one, please. Um, this is just uh, some other, um, um, uh, uh, optimization you can achieve um, because um, to uh, create a mesh peer-to-peer uh, -peer IPsec tunnel uh, can be troublesome uh, for some deployment. So instead of um, creating everything is based on client-based, creating those um, IPsec tunnel for each uh, client route, uh, it's possible to treat IPsec tunnel as the transport pipe so that um, um, the the IPsec tunnel is, um, is treated exactly the same as uh, a pipe between two nodes. The traffic can be transported either over IPsec tunnel or over um, the VPN and POS. This is assuming for the CPE node themselves, um, they actually have different type of um, um, elderly network attached. And this what um, okay, next slide, please. Okay, Linda, you just have seven minutes. What is that? You just have two minutes. Oh, okay. Sorry for that. Okay, so this just anal analyzes the pros and cons of um, um, this approach. Um, the pro is reducing the number of IPsec tunnels in the network. The, the trouble is um, uh, each node has to be able to uh, terminate the tunnel and then transmit forward to the next node. Next slide, please. So that's the end. Okay, so here we are calling for uh, working group adoption um, because we think this draft is very helpful for the industry, uh, for the other organizations like MAF, Metro Internet Forum, BBF, they all have SD1 project to show to them that, hey, the BGP is very well suited to scale SD1. I think it will be very good um, document um, uh, for other organizations, for the industry. Okay, that's it. Okay, question. I don't see you, so we can move to next. And while uh, Stephen is pulling the next slide, uh, guys who have not signed the blue sheet, please uh, write it in the etherpad. I have a, I have sent the link again on the chat. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Qing Wu. I'm here to present uh, network and VPN service performance monitoring young data model draft. The name we list here are also this draft. And uh, next. Yeah, uh, just a little bit, bit of background. What is this draft about, actually? This draft uh, defines a young data model that can provide end-to-end -end network performance monitoring 
in addition, it can also can provide a VPN service uh, performance monitoring. So foundation for this work uh, is uh, performance measurement methodology that uh, already be proposed for the Ethernet network, RP network, and MPLS network. We can use this uh, performance measurement methodology to uh, connect the, the performance data to build the, the data source. And uh, but uh, how these performance data can be aggregated and uh, uh, exposed to the uh, upper layer, this is something we really want to address in this draft. Next. So uh, what is current status of this draft? This uh, draft is not a new draft. We already presented uh, for twice. Actually, the first we presented in uh, best working wood, actually in IETF 103. And we got a lot of uh, support for this draft, and uh, it actually be put in the candidate for working group adoption. Also, we uh, in the uh, previous uh, IETF meeting in Singapore, we presented this draft in TIS working group, try to make sure uh, uh, there's, uh, there's no overlapping with the T8 performance management related work. And uh, update uh, since uh, the last version, we actually uh, added two new author, uh, Mohammed from Orange and Oscar from Telefonica as the two new uh, co author. And based their input, actually, we add VPN summary statics at the network level. And we, uh, so in this model, not only we uh, model the parameter for the performance metric, but also we model how the performance metric are measured and connected. So we add the reference time and the measurement interval, and uh, to use this as the uh, reference time uh, uh, to do the performance data aggregation. And in, ad in addition, actually, we replace uh, uh, average performance data, such as uh, delay value or jitter value, with uh, percentile uh, value, because we think uh, percentile performance data value can well reflect the worst behavior of nano performance. And also, we make a according change for the young data model code. Yeah. Next. Next page, uh, yeah. So what, what is the use cases? I, I think the typical use case is the real-time uh, VPN service monitoring. Uh, we, uh, as a customer or, or the operator, they don't care uh, what kind of uh, performance measurement method you are used in the underlying network. They care about uh, what, what, what uh, they more care about it, well, what is end-to-end -end network performance or VPN service performance. Suppose you, uh, if that's the interconnection between uh, uh, several VPN sites, you care about uh, what is the uh, latency or packet loss, or what is the uh, bandwidth between uh, two VPN sites when you inject the traffic from one VPN site to another VPN site. So uh, we actually can uh, measure per link uh, performance measurement uh, uh, data uh, using existing uh, uh, performance measurement methodology, and we can actually uh, you leverage the uh, managing plane time measure mechanism, such as Yang Push or some other mechanism, to uh, export these performance measurement data and to the managing plane to the upper layer. The upper layer can do the aggregation uh, and aggregate these performance measurement data to uh, uh, provide end-to-end -end, uh, performance measurement results. Also, they can leverage like a pass computation method to uh, to calculate these. Uh, performance measurement data, such as end-to-end -end latency, end-to-end -end packet loss. And uh, with these performance measurement data, they can optimize the uh, network and uh, build the closed-loop uh, network management. So these are key use cases. Next. So uh, to provide the network perform end-to-end uh, -end, uh, network performance uh, uh, monitoring, actually, we also need to establish the relationship between the, uh, the service topology and underlay topology. This is show example of how this uh, relationship can be used. And uh, so we can uh, connect the, the uh, basic uh, performance measurement data in the underlying network. And uh, with this uh, relationship between each other, and we can actually uh, aggregate the data uh, uh, to provide end-to-end -end network performance uh, uh, monitoring. Next. So 
this is a model structure we proposed actually. Uh, so uh, compared with the previous version, we had a few new parameters. Uh, actually, this new parameter actually in red uh, circle actually. Uh, first uh, parameter we propose uh, like a VP, uh, VPN summary statics. We put it at the network level. So the basic this model uh, design actually is augmented from the RTOS network topology model that has already been published as RFC. And uh, in addition, we add uh, some of uh, other parameters to uh, like uh, reference time and uh, measurement interval reference time actually show uh, when the performance data uh, start to, to measure the measurement interval to show how often, how frequently the performance data can be measured. So this can be served as a reference uh, time to to help you to to provide provide the end to end performance of the measurement data. Um, so in addition, actually, we replace the average uh, value, uh, average performance metrics such as uh, latency, delay, uh, and jitter uh, with the percentile uh, value. Because uh, based on the discussion, we we think uh, uh, percentile value can well uh, well reflect uh, the worst uh, case of the network performance. So we use percentile values. Uh, that's uh, the, the change we made compared with the previous version. Next. So, uh, so we we actually get the, the performance measurement data. Actually, you need to uh, export this data to the upper layer. So, uh, either you can use the Young Push uh, uh, Management Telemetry Mechanism to subscribe the, the performance measurement data you are interested in and. Uh, the, and then the device, network device can uh, to publish the data uh, uh, in uh, continuous way. Uh, in addition, actually, we can uh, uh, allow the uh, the pooling based mechanism. You can define the customized RPC. You can actually query the performance data you are interested, in. and uh, so we can allow both both uh, way to uh, recharge this performance measurement data. Next. So for the next step, we, we think this job has been around for a while. We actually already presented for, for twice, actually. We think it's uh, talk, uh, talking with uh, our colleagues, we think this job is good shape uh, for working group adoption. Uh, that's all. Thank you. I don't see anyone in queue, so we can go to the next. No, I, I still have uh, Stefan Kowski speaking as a chair. Still have one question. Um, probably uh, Martin can um, can also um, can also help uh, in this. Um, so your document is uh, defining a lot of um, uh, performance metrics, and I'm still wondering if we could uh, leverage on uh, uh, on some existing work uh, that is defining such performance metric because your performance metric are not. Uh, tied specifically to VPN, it's, I think it could be applicable to uh, uh, to many performance measurement use case. Uh, that's why I'm still wondering if it's a, a good thing to have this performance match, at least some of these performance metrics defined in this draft, or if uh, someone else in another working group should um, define this performance metric that you could potentially potentially reuse. Because I don't uh, think that it's know. really the best working group yeah. job to, to define modeling of performance measurements. I, I, uh, the applicability so, to I, VPN, yes, it applies to BES, but uh, the performance metrics itself, except if it's something which is really specific to a VPN, uh, yeah, I, I just want to uh, to have uh, over working group in a, in ITF trying to redefine something that you currently have. Uh, question, uh, Stefano, answer your question. I, I think uh, for this job, uh, we we actually don't uh, define any new uh, performance metric. Uh, we just uh, reuse uh, the performance metric that uh, uh, you know be uh, proposed in maybe existing working group actually Hello. using the performance metric methodology. Here we focus on the performance metric reporting and monitoring. Actually, uh, how these uh, these performance data can be uh, exposed to to the upper layer. This is uh, our focus. So, I'm not sure we actually define any new performance metric. Uh, 
agree, but, actually, performance may, 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 any new performance metric, it, it, they should be defined. They should be defined in some uh, relevant working group, like a PPM or some MPO yeah, working group. But, but uh, uh, as I may, mentioned in, in the background slides, actually, we, we don't target to define any new performance metric. Actually, for uh, uh, VPN-related parameter, we, in the latest version, we add a uh, VPN summary statics. This is something related to the VPN. Uh, so, uh, I, so, I think are, that, uh, so are you currently you, uh, reusing some uh, uh, Yang models coming from IPPM? We we leverage their performance uh, measurement methodology. They propose uh, uh, this can be yeah, reused. But it's, Actually, it's, it's, yeah, but it's not a matter of uh, only methodology. Methodology is okay, but I'm also talking about uh, all the Yang leaves and containers that you can use that may be reusable for other use cases. The, the performance metric, uh, actually, this is some data we can use in Young to, to model that, actually. Uh, young model is just, just a tool. Actually, they, they focus on the, uh, you know, performance monitoring, how, how to, you know, export this kind of performance matter to, to the upper layer. So I, I, I think, uh, I'm not sure that that's our focus to define any new performance metric, you know. I already clarified in the background slides, you know, this uh, be presented in, in previous, uh, meeting, you know, about this, you know, they. So the, I, I see there is a question from uh, Avi Tosky. Can you please uh, come to the mic? Uh, pardon, uh, what, what is the question uh, in, the, in the chat window? Sorry, I was, I was speaking to me. Can you hear me, guys? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, yeah, along the same same lines I, uh, I wanted to ask uh, with regards to these. So I guess you're proposing to to sort of uh, um, sort of extend the sort of topology young model with uh, with the ability to sort of take some 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 measurements or maybe define some KPIs for 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 some of the components there. And I was I was thinking, well, the the name of the draft says VPN sort of performance statistics and uh, and yeah, these yeah. seem like general type of statistics related to sort of, you know, network which then yeah, can be right. reused. By... This chapter actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we propose a generic performance measurement uh, monitoring uh, model. Actually, this not only can be applied, uh, applicable to Air 3 VPN, but also can be applicable to Air 2 VPN. Actually, this, this is, a, uh, you know, just, a, you know, it's a, Common building blocker that can be, you know, applied to ma many VPN uh, service model. Right. So you're sort of like yeah, proposing a our... sort of like a generic extension to, the, or sort of like a set of uh, maybe KPIs or, or, or values that that could be measured with with some some KPIs set in there. Because I'm thinking, you know, like for for L3 VPN service, I mean, you can you can have, you know, one type of service can have a different, you know, SLAs or KPIs. From from different type of service and and uh, I'm just wondering you know, like how, how would you sort of generalize or extend these you know models uh, so that you could sort of marry up what is going on in say say uh, L3 uh, VPN service model with the uh, expected sort of um, uh, performance characteristics of that service once instantiated. I, I, I think a design principle is we can use uh, Air 3 VPN performance metric as a basis and try to make it extensible to cover some other cases like Air 2 VPN. So you can see actually this, uh, uh, the, the, the API we propose actually not only can be applied to the IP uh, network, but also can be applied to the MPL network. So we, we try to generalize this, but the, the basis actually is, you know, Use air survey VPN uh, performance metric. Actually, this is a, not a new metric we propose. Actually, we just uh, leverage the exist, existing performance metric. We can do the aggregation to to expose uh, to the management. Uh, so, because uh, in upper layer they only uh, they, they care about the end-to-end -end performance metric or, or 
our tunnel level okay. about metric. Okay, so, so, sorry, but we are we are out of time for uh, for this discussion. So please continue uh, on the list. We have to move forward. Okay, thank you. Okay, Jan. Again, can you hear us? Hello, can you hear us? Maybe you can pull up my slide meanwhile he when he comes up. Okay, let's move to the next one. <clears throat> yeah, so we can go to the first slide. Okay. Next. So this slide, uh, this draft was presented again in IETF 106. And as I had mentioned during 106 that we already had working group last call done for this, and it was past working group last call. When Jorge uh, came up with comment that there is a field in route type eight, which says sequence number, but draft doesn't say anything about what to do with the sequence number. And after that, we had a couple of meetings across vendor and authors, and there were a lot of discussion during IETF 106 uh, in the halls, and we had uh, some of the discussion going on with different vendors over email as well. Uh, next slide. So one of the main challenge which we uh, faced with this draft was there were two set of implementation out in the field, and one of with sequence number and one was without sequence number. So now all the discussions were happening that how to make sure or which direction this draft should go and how each vendor can interrupt without any problem. So there were multiple options were discussed across different vendors. So one of the options which I, I had presented uh, during last IETF was removing sequence number four byte from the route type eight. And the impact of this change would have been now since we are saying that there are already implementation who have sequence number included. So route reflector has to had to make sure that it can understand both length and it can reflect both. Now there are some implementation where uh, individual E's, they do session flap in case they don't understand uh, the routes. So there were chances that even all the P's has to understand both of the length which was with sequence number and without sequence number. The second options which were uh, under discussion were moving this four byte to reserve field because every author and almost everyone in the working group, they do agree that there is a no real use case for uh, sequence number in route type eight. So there is no point keeping a four byte field as a sequence number, which has uh, no use. So alternate option was moving it as a reserve field and I always make it zero. And now the impact will be for the vendors who don't have these uh, sequence number included already in NLRI, it has to be included. Third option which came uh, during recent discussion in uh, mailing list was having complete new code point. So we keep route type eight as is and slowly deprecate it and get new code point, which will have a route defined without sequence number. And slowly we migrate to the new code point. But with this option challenges where we were, while we were having discussion internally and with some other vendors, that if we go this path, it is, it is little complex. That we will have to support both of them initially and then slowly maybe have some config knob to make sure that it moves from one of the implementation to other implementation. So the 
basically a new complexity getting added for vendor as well as operators. So next slide. <clears throat> after evaluating all these three options and the impact it, it is for sure that whichever solution we pick everyone has to do some kind of modification to their current implementation and uh, there are uh, we had already checked with a couple of vendors and each of them have some variation of implementation already so we are uh, we are proposing that maybe the one of the way to go about it is making this four byte as a reserve field and it will not be part of key and sender will always send it as a zero and receiver is going to uh, ignore this if we go this route uh, next slide so what are the possible uh, changes for each each of the vendor and this list, uh, there are two things that this list may not be the complete list. It is only based on our discussions. We, I did try to reach out through our mailing list plus Nanog list to see that which all other vendors have implementation of route type seven and eight. So only these are the vendors where I could get positive response. And again, the expected change, which I have written, it is very high level change because every vendor might have different kind of design and their change may be depending on what design they have internally. So for Cisco, so right, right, right now Cisco implementation is without sequence number. And if we go this, uh, if we accept this change, so now Cisco has to change its implementation where it will send and reflect route type 8 with 4 byte of reserve field and this 4 byte of reserve field will not be part of uh, key anymore for juniper juniper already does send sequence number so i am high level i don't see any change but internally it may be change from uh, key to non key for nokia based on our uh, last discussion during itf 106 and couple of meetings they did implement that they will send by default they will send without sequence number and uh, they can accept both both of the format which is with sequence number and without sequence number so as of today it their implementation will work fine but maybe they may want to go the route where uh, they change this uh, they add four bit bytes of reserve field and Arista has already implementation where they actually have both implementation and they control it using CLI knob where uh, they can have, they can originate with sequence number, without sequence number, and they can reflect both of them. So even for them, as of today, there may not be any change other than uh, some internal uh, change about moving from non-key to uh, key to non-key. And again, these changes are completely from the high level. Each vendor uh, can speak on their own behalf that how their changes are going to look like. Uh, next slide. So I think that's all I had. And if there are any questions, let me see in the queue. So I see John is in the queue, John. um thank you for uh for the update um i just wanted to briefly say that that seems um completely fine to me um and uh, it it addresses substantially all of my concerns anyway i i'm, I'm good with it thank you uh, when i see you in the queue so my um Hello, can you hear me? So um, change, I just like to um, request the, um, the current type to be reserved because uh, I mean reserve in a sense is still show up in the draft because uh, it has always been in the draft and then because of that the implementation as you said based working on the draft to in order to uh, provide interop um, 
procedure. So people two or three years down the road, they need to understand their implementation, which has been implemented based on the type NNI type with the sequence number. So to be clearly documented in the draft. Can I um, add a comment? This is John again. Yeah, sure. Uh, that, I, I think based on your on your presentation, that's what you were saying is that the, the draft would continue to show the field there and it would just uh, uh, label it as uh, reserved rather than sequence number, right? Yes, so it will be changed to reserve plus it will be not part of key anymore. Uh, so may I comment on that? In the future, way farther away from the future, you know, we can all move to the new format. This is a new format, which means the sequence number is not part of key, but you cannot erase what has been done today. Sequence number is part of key. So that's right. some subtle difference here. So you need to, we need to provide a procedure with the implementation with the sequence number as a part of key. Yes, um, in the future, that's the past. Um, sequence number cannot be part of the key. But today, based on the draft, there is some implementation has the sequence number as a route key. Essentially, we will have the same route type today with the sequence number as a key and some implementation without the sequence yeah. number. So the same route, now you have a two route key. We need to deal with this situation. In the further away future, yes, sequence number can be removed with not be part of key once everybody is upgraded. So um, may I comment? Yeah, sure, Ali. So, uh, <clears throat> We um, moved this field to the reserve. So uh, the draft, uh, the new version of the draft is intended to say the field is reserved. So when the field is reserved, and we're gonna be saying that the sender uh, needs to set it to the zero and the receiver to ignore it. If it is reserved and then we, uh, have it, uh, does it make sense to have it as part of the key if the field is reserved? Um, in the future, when it's reserved, uh, that's uh, not a part of key. I agree that that's the ultimate goal. We are on the same page. That's the goal we need to go with that. Very yes. Good. So in, yeah. the, uh, in the short term for your implementation that you put it as part of the key, Okay, you're setting it as zero, right? I mean, the fields are zero currently because it's not in use. Are you setting it to a different value? Yeah, so Ari, this is, uh, I hear what you say. Please hear me out. This, I'm not trying to make it difficulty because we are all facing the reality, right? So uh, this is uh, EVPN is a very popular technology now. So even though people come to the best uh, mailing list express uh, what they think or what they have done, not every vendor speak up, right? Every vendor's uh, implemented that because so, EVPN is, uh, is implemented by more than four vendors, right? So so I'm just afraid uh, if uh, as a vendor, we, we don't know what they do, they will follow um, just uh, practically, they may follow what has been written in the draft so that is the um the whole idea yeah. uh, i mean for these changes and um, you know uh, and, and all the exchanges over the mailing list is take into account what has been implemented what the situation is and to come up you know, with a reasonable Solution that uh, uh, that uh, satisfies most of the requirements, and uh, if uh, we took the uh, you know uh, uh, based on the current situation of the vendor implementation, and in my email that I sent last night, I said we can call the vendors again to see where we are. Okay, 
we have uh, one vendors that has implemented it uh, uh, with the uh, with this field, uh, with, uh, with the existing format, uh, few vendor and one vendor, and that is your vendor, my vendor uh, implemented it without, and a couple of, uh, you know, few vendors uh, uh, have implemented it with the both. And then the other vendors, which I know, they basically, uh, they haven't implemented it. So, based on this situation, we took, you know, um, uh, in terms of the uh, changes, I saw okay, uh, we're gonna Cisco is gonna bite the bullet and we're gonna change our uh, implementation to remove the field uh, for the uh, uh, for the uh, sake of that we have the least uh, amount of the changes to the other vendors and for the sake of having the least. Uh, having uh, the easiest solution. So based on that, we want to just simply capture it as a reserve field, okay? And <clears throat> say that this is not part of the route key. And if, it is, if the fields are zero, it doesn't matter to be part of the route key or not. It does makes that much of the difference. And we can pull it and see if there is any uh, vendors that uh, if there is any vendors out there that uh, is setting it to the non-zero field or uh, not to the or to a non-constant field, AC in Q. So may I actually? Have the... I guess I guess I don't see this is AC Linda from Cisco. I guess I don't see how internally using it a key is a problem unless. Somebody implements, uh, advertises multiple in instances with different sequence numbers and doesn't want the later one to update the former one. It seems like you know, you know people said the sequence numbers didn't didn't have really any uh, functional value, so it doesn't seem like the internal usage of a key would make any difference to me. Yeah, I agree on that. If that's there is about much, much to do about nothing, that's a moot point. You know, you don't have to change anything. And that's my point because it is a constant value. As long as it is constant value, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I agree with that. If uh, every as a vendor, which I mean, the vendor has not speak up, they have uh, always a constant to make it. Then that's not a problem. I do agree with that. So as long as uh, that's are the, the truth, then no problem. Yes. And with, so that was my point, and I'm saying that based on that, we can go with the text that we talked about. Is gonna we're gonna make it as a reserve, okay? Uh, we're gonna make it reserve. It's gonna be set to zero in the uh, sender uh, receiver ignores it, and if the sender sets it as a, as a in a constant. Doesn't matter in terms of the route key, and it's going to get ignored by the receiver anyway. I think we'll take one last comment from Jacob, then uh, we'll have to take it to list. We also yeah. have Jeff as I think in the queue. Um, okay. Uh, um, it's, it's ignored on receipt. When you ignore it, um, you're not going to use it as a key, are you? Because if you use it as a key, you're not ignoring it. Um, and so that's the first point. Second thing is, um, if in future it indeed does get used, um, then we can redefine what we're going to use it for and whether or not it will be used as a key. But you're ignoring it, and if you can put it in a, if you put it use it as a key, you're not ignoring it. For, you know, so. I, I don't see Jeff name, but yeah, Stephen, you said Jeff. Yeah, I saw it in the chat. Jeff uh, asked, did you want to say something? Briefly, sorry, I didn't post it globally, just to share. Um, I, I think the main point to take from when uh, is that uh, I agree with everybody. As long as everybody's setting zero, uh, then there's basically zero interop issue. Uh, I believe when's indirect point is that uh, when we craft our text talking about this field being reserved, it's probably worth throwing in a 
sentence, maybe two, that says, you know, this needs to be zero because some implement early implementations use this as part of the key and it's for interop purposes. I think if that's done, uh, I think all of our concerns are addressed. Uh, I'm sorry, Jeff, can you please uh, repeat it? I, I believe part of Wen's point is that since some implementations treat this as the key, as long as all implementations are sending zero, we agree that we are all set. It is probably worth putting into the next version of the draft, one, maybe two sentences that explain that we want it to be zero because some early implementations treated this as a key field and that it may cause interop issues if they do not. That's it. Uh, that's one. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. That's uh, what I mean. Thanks. If yeah. that's okay, that's perfect. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. So I think uh, so, uh, just uh, one other thing. Uh, do we have John uh, on the call? Uh, still, uh, if John is uh, is on the call, I like to ask him for the sake of other people uh, that who are not on this call. Uh, John, respond to the email which I sent last night, making sure that everybody is on the, uh, is on the same page. Uh, I didn't catch everything you just said. I'm sorry. Uh, John, uh, uh, some uh, uh, not all people are on this call. So, for the sake of the people who are not on the call, if you can respond to the email that I sent last night, and uh, you know, making sure that it is clear to everybody the approach that we are taking. Sure, I'll go and take a look for it. All right, thanks. Yeah, bye. Welcome. Welcome. Okay, I don't think there are any other comments uh, on this draft. Uh, so I don't know if again you are still with us or not. He did think that he's he's back. Again, do you hear us? Again, you are mute because he did the text saying that. Okay, so last call, Gyan, are you with us? So he did text me saying that, can you hear me? Gyan, we can't hear you. Okay, we, we just have five minutes left. So if we can't, um, if we can't hear you, um, we will probably close the meeting. So he is dialing from phone. If we can give him a minute. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you can go ahead dial from phone, please. Hello? Jan, can you hear us? Your voice is too uh, loud. Can you please come near mic? Sound better? No, not really. How, how does that sound? Okay. Okay. Let's try. Uh, let's try this way. Uh, unfortunately, you just have five minutes.
Anybody else hear the speaker? Because I can't. Hey, Jim, are you still with us? I'm sorry, we can't hear you. He is there. He's just extremely quiet. I can hear him <laughs> very, very faint, and I can hear him not hear every word. Get closer to the mic or, uh, or, or, or move the wiggle the connections or anything on it. How is that? Is that better? Yeah, much better than an echo. So much better, except you seem to have okay. two open mics now. How's that? Is that better? A little bit of echo. We can hear you, but you have a lot of echo. Let me see. Mute one of the devices. I see. I see. Hold on. Let me try that. Yeah, you've got to both mute the mic and turn off the uh, the speak on on the device that you're not talking into. Yeah, let me try that. How's that? Still. Can you hear? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, there's still some echo. You... Hello? Yeah. Is that better? Yes, it is. Go ahead. Okay. 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 Looks like a slight echo. Uh, okay. I'm going to go ahead and proceed. Okay. So, so basically in this draft, I think what we're talking about is uh, being able to um, use RFC 5549 um, encoding to advertise the um, IPv4 and LRI via IPv6 next time. Sorry, the uh, Mac Echo is pretty bad. Um, 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 um. So, do you have two, two speakers that, are, that you are currently using? Hello? Hello? Sorry. So, so with this um, draft, I guess the proposal is, I guess, or the idea is really to be able to um, uh, advertise the IPv4 NLRI with the IPv6 next top. So being able to um, do that on the on the edges primarily um, and using the uh, software mesh framework in RFC 5565, uh, tunneling six over four. Um, so with that, it's something similar to what we've done with um, with six over four, but now, now doing that over a um, four over six software. Um, uh, and and with that being able to um, utilize the BGP transport as a um, as a as a um, ability to um, uh, advertise both capabilities, so the four and six capability, uh, so you so we can eliminate the um, you know possibly eliminate like four IPv4 peering, so you can carry both four and six address families over the one peer. I mean that's kind of really the the main crux of it. In terms of the um, RFC 5565, like tunneling six over four, and that's what we've done today. Uh, but with um, with V6 and um, having a V6 core and um, having a four over six, I guess, overlay, um, being able to um, kind of, I guess, do the same and advert and um, um, be able to um, advertise the same capabilities over the um, over the six core. Um, uh, next slide. Next slide. So, so with this, so with this, uh, uh, with with the uh, four over six transport, um, what we're able to do is, it's it's similar to what's done with um, a six over four transport. 
But but now with um, four over six, you're actually at, you have your your peering to the uh, from the PE to the route reflector. It is uh, you have your uh, your SAFIs. So your type so your VPN V4 uh, and VPN. Um, the, the address families are over are now with um, uh, IPv so IPv4 over with an IPv6 next hop encoding for our um, RFC 5549 encoding. Um, as far as gain, uh, the big gain is really on the edges where where you're able to use BGP of the transport and actually provide the same four and six capability over the over a single peer. Um, uh, please go on to the uh, next slide. So this is basically showing kind of it. So an issue that came up and it was a, a um, in a um, in, in a uh, presentation with uh, in Nano, I guess 2015 related to IXP's um, address space depletion um, on on the um, exchange points where uh, IPv4 um, you know address, you know address space was being depleted and an idea was to actually use that capability and advertise both four and six um, capabilities over the peering session. Um, so as to eliminate the four peering, so you could just really have one peer, so a single peer on the edge. Uh, ne next slide. So what that so what that would look like is you would actually have a single peer. It would be a single V6 peer. So similar to how we do, let's say, with our PE to route reflector peering, where we stack all the SAFIs, we're now we're now taking the uh, V V6 NRL and V sorry the V4 NRL LRI. And advertising that capability over the six peer as well. So, so now both four and six prefixes and LRI are advertised, and now you're using that same V6 next hop for both four and six. Um, what this does is it really, and it's really for enterprises and service providers, you're able to uh, eliminate uh, V4 peering at the edge. And that, that's really the, the big gain. Uh, with this draft and possible like OPEX savings and managing your uh, your V6 peering, V4 peering at the edge. Um, next next slide. So this is a typical uh, V4 core, and this is like six six over four. So here you have all the address family SAFIs, like uh, V4, uh, V6, V6, and they're all uh, the SAFIs are over a four peer. Um, so this, this is a typical six to four um, software framework where you're tunneling these six tra six traffic, so uh, VPN v6 and MVPN over a four core. Uh, next next slide. Next slide. Sorry, this, this slide's okay. So so in this slide, this is kind of existing as well. So this is uh, takes with with IPv4. I, I, IPv6 islands over an IPv6 score. And here we actually have IPv6 NRI with IPv4 next top, um, where you're doing, you're using uh, BGPLU for 6PE, labeling your uh, V6 prefixes with a V4 next top, um, using that same RFC 5549 encoding for the uh, next top. Uh, next slide. Next slide. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is it. Sorry, so um, so this is a V6 core. So now this is with the software mesh framework with four over a, over a six core with, with VPN. And in this in this scenario, we're taking all the SAFIs. And so on the PE to, uh, to RR peering, all the SAFIs are carried. So in here, there's the gain here is, um, it's, it's still the same as going, uh, six over a four core, but now it's four over six core. So you you just are lit, um, at keeping all the same the same SAFIs, but now over a six next top. So you have all your IPv4 and V6 and LRI over an IPv6 next top. Um, but then when you look at the edges on the PEC edges customer, that that's where really the major gain is with this draft and the OPEX savings and possible. Uh, you know, um, management savings where you're able to eliminate your V4 peering by advertising your um, 
your uh, four capability over over that same six peer. So both four and six on LRI are advertised over the peers, and that's and that's really at the edges of the network where where now you have that um, address savings for V4, and everything can be completely V6. Uh, go ahead to the next slide. So this is actually the island scenario. So it's the same uh, scenario that we have with 6PE, but with four. So this is actually going with a, with a soft wire uh, mesh framework, four over six core, where your um, your V4, um, your V your V4 MLRI is now is now um, lit, is um, BGPLU. So lit, it's um, labeled unicast over over six core tunneled with the um, uh, software mesh framework, um, but in this case as well. So that's that's very similar to the six to four with six P. But now we're just going over of four over six core. So in this as well, basically the same savings is um, on the PEC edge, where where we can now really eliminate your four peering. Um, so this this use case is really for both. So this this one and the previous one. Uh, with the service provider or an enterprise, whether you're doing 6PE or VPN v4, VPN v6 in the core, the core side doesn't change as much. Um, it doesn't change, but you have the same number of SAFIs of, over a v6 peer with your PE to R appearing. But really, the big gain is actually at the edge. And that's where, you know, your BGP transport, you're advertising the four capability over the uh, six peer. Um, with with the V6 next top for RC 5549, and now and now you're able to really eliminate all of your uh, four peering. So, um, any any questions or or comments? I don't see one in queue. Okay. Okay, so we are done with uh, with the meeting. Um, so we don't know yet if we will see each other in uh, in Madrid. It will depend on uh, uh, the country conditions and so on. But um, in case there is no meeting uh, in Spain, uh, we will organize another interim meeting. Thanks a lot. And if you haven't signed the uh, blue sheet on Etherpad, please uh, please do it. Thank you. Thank you.